So in the table that we're given, which one is the key tone? Because that is what 2.1.1 ask of us. So the question now is how do we identify a key tone? We know that if we have a carbon that is bonded to an oxygen and two other atoms, then that will give us a ketone. Usually, it is a carbon and another carbon, but then not always. And then another condition is that one of these axes cannot be a hydrogen, right? Because if it's a hydrogen, then it will be an aldehyde. Another way to identify a ketone is if the name ends with O N E. So when we go to the table, that's what we're looking for. Clearly, A is not, and then clearly B is an alkene because of the double bond. And then C is also an alkene, the name is telling us, and then D seems like it's an aldehyde because um, the oxygen is on the carbon that's on the end of the chain, right? But E ends with O and E, so that gives it away, that is a ketone. So for 2.1.1, I'm definitely going with E. And then 2.1.2 says uh, the letter that represents a compound that has the general formula CN h2 n minus 2 and then this is an alkyne right because that's the general formula of an alkyne so we go to our table and we look for an alkyne a is not an alkyne because we don't have a triple bond because for an alkyne you will have a triple bond on b it's a double bond on c is a double bond and then on d uh, we have oxygen, so it's definitely not gonna be CnH2n minus 2, right? And the same is true for E, but F, it ends with Y and E. So with only that, we will know that fine is an alkyne. So for 2.1.2, we go in with F. So if you wanna identify an alkyne, uh, you look for triple bond or the name ending with Y and E. And then for 2.1.3, it says an isomer of 2 methyl but 2 in. So as soon as it says uh, 2 in, we know we are looking for an alkene, right? So we are looking for an alkene uh, with 4, 5 carbons, right? We're looking for an alkene with uh, five carbons because but will give us four and then methyl will give us uh, one, right? So for A, we have a halogen which is bromine, so we forget about it. And then for B, we actually have um, one, two, three, four. So we have four carbons. So it's not what we're looking for. And then for C, uh, that's uh, pent uh, is five, right? Because it says meth, eth, prop, but, pent. So at pent, that's where we stop in. We have found our culprit. So for 2.1.3, our answer is C because it's an isomer of 2 methyl but 2 in. They have the same molecular formula but different structural formulas and then for 2.1.4 it says uh the letter of that compound that represents or oh, that has the same molecular formula as ethyl ethanoid ethyl ethanoid is an ester right so the only other compound that can have a molecular formula uh, be that of an ester is another ester or a carboxylic acid so right now let's just look for an ester or a carboxylic acid a definitely not and then b is an alkene c is an alkene d we think is an aldehyde and then e is a ketone and then F is an alkyne, and then G is an alkane, and then now we already know that the answer is supposed to be H before we even do the problem. And then if you look at H, 
um, we have four carbons, right? Just like we do in um, ethyl ethanoid. And then we have the same functional group two of those uh, two oxygens, right? So before we go any further, 2.1.4, uh, we're just going to have H. And then 2.2, 2.2.1, uh, says, uh, you pick name of compound A. So before we go anywhere, we have to look for the longest carbon chain, right? And if we go to compound A, you're going to see that uh, if we start calculating from this side, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Uh, if we decide to go up, we're still going to have 6. And then if we turn here and go down here, we still have going to have 6. So it seems like 6 is our longest carbon chain. So we're going to have uh, X. We can see that there's no double bond, so it's going to be hexane, right? Uh, for alkane. So we're going to have hexane. And then uh, we're going to start uh, counting from the left, right? Because uh, we are closest uh to the halogen and the the branch so when we start naming uh we're gonna start naming uh the halogen right just because of the alphabet b so we're gonna say two dash bromo and then dash two for this uh branch here of carbon and then uh, on the one, two, three, four, and then on the fourth one and the fifth one. So we're going to have 2.4.5 uh, dash, let me just erase and make more space, dash uh, methyl butane. And actually it's not butane because we say it is six, right? So it's supposed to be uh, hexane. What am I writing? So there we have it. And then for 2.2.2, .2, it says uh, we should give them a structural formula of compound F. Compound F, we have said that is an alkyne, right? So we're expecting a, a triple bond somewhere. And then that somewhere is given to us uh, on the second carbon, right? So we can see uh, the first carbon the second and then voila we can put our triple bond here so that it can be pent 2 and then y and e right so pent uh that is five like we said so we still need two other carbons and then where are our branches at so we're gonna start counting our carbons from uh the carbon closest to from where we'll get uh, to the triple bond first, right? So it's from the left hand side. So we have one, two, three, four, uh, five. So we can put our branches on the fourth carbon, which is uh, this one here, right? So here we have a carbon and then we have another carbon because it says uh, dimethyl. And then now it's just a matter of putting on the hydrogen. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So dash, 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 uh, dash, dash, dash. And then we can have another dash here, dash, dash. And then um, uh, for this carbon here, carbon number three is already saturated, right? We don't have to put anything else. And then for carbon number two, it's also already saturated, so we don't have to put anything. And then dash, uh, dash, and then dash here. Uh, why am I saying this car is already saturated? Because it can only accommodate uh, four bonds, right? And as we can see, one and this three here one and this three here so on the dashes put the hydrogens i'm not gonna put them just for the sake of time so we can move ahead and go to uh 2.3 so we have 2.3 which says for compound d write down there and then compound d let's just write it down uh again so we have ch3 uh ch2 ch2 
CHO. Uh, like we've been saying all the time, uh, compound D is an aldehyde, right? And then 2.3.1. Why are we saying compound D is an aldehyde? Let's start there first. Because uh, this carbon here is bonded to this oxygen, right? And then it's bonded to this hydrogen. And that's essentially the functional group of an aldehyde. It's something like a carbon, uh, then double bond with an oxygen, and then we have a hydrogen here. And that's exactly what we have for compound D. And then the homologous or whatsoever series it belongs to, that's aldehyde, like we've been saying, aldehyde hide and then 2.3.2 .2 says name of its functional group that's carbonyl carbonyl yeah people usually confuse the two uh but because you guys are here and watching this video there won't be any of that and then 2.3.3 .3 says structural formula of its functional isomer so for its functional isomer, the functional isomer of aldehyde is ketone, right? I think I've seen that in this video. If it's not in this video, then it's in many others that I've done, right? Uh, they're approaching a hundred now, so it's quite a lot. So, so let's go ahead and draw the uh, structural formula of its functional isomer, right? So we still need four carbons. So let's just have our four carbons. And then instead of the double bond uh, being in this carbon at the end, the double bond is supposed to be on this carbon here. Or it can be on this carbon. The order doesn't matter because whenever you count, it's going to be on the second one. And then uh, from there, we can then fill in the carbons like we always do. So there we have it, there we have it, there we have it, there we have it, there we have it. And then another carbon, another carbon, another carbon. Uh, if you write the structural, not the structural, uh, the molecular formula for this um, structure here is going to be the same as the molecular formula for compound D. And then 2.4, 2.4.1 says the U pack name of the chain isomer for compound G. Compound G is butane, right? Uh, so the chain isomer of compound uh, G uh, supposed to have the same molecular formula again, but uh, different chain, right? So for compound G is actually one option that you have because we have four carbons, right? One, two, three, four. So if you take this carbon and you put it here, right? So let's put it here. You still have one, two, three, four. And then, um, if you like take this carbon here at the end and you put it here instead. Oh, carbon, carbon, carbon. Let me just erase that. And you put, uh, the carbon here. Then you're gonna have, uh, prop, uh, with a branch here, right? And that's the only, option you can have with a branch here that's the only option you can have if you play around with it a couple of times you will realize that uh that's the case so uh the you pick name of the chain isomer let's write down the structure first so that we can have um we can name easily right so we have a carbon a carbon a carbon and then there's a branch here and then so it's gonna be uh propane right but then on the second carbon uh, there is a uh, methyl, so it's two methyl propane, and then um, 2.4.2 says a balanced equation using molecular formula for its uh, complete combustion. So, as soon as you add combustion, you add in O2 and you get in CO2 plus H2O. So, if we do that, we're gonna get C4H10 uh, plus O2 giving us uh, CO2 plus H2O uh, plus heat, right? And then the rule of thumb here, the advice um, I'm going to give you is name, uh, you have to balance it in this order. Carbon, hydrogen, and then you figure out the oxygen at the end. Usually, this will be the easy route. 
if you start by trying to balance the hydrogens or the oxygen you can at the end of the day because uh, you're balancing you're gonna you have to make it work but then if you start with the carbon you come with the hydrogen and then the oxygen you will have an easy road so let's go ahead and do that so uh, the carbon we have four carbons here clearly so and here we have one so let's multiply co2 by four so that we can get um four carbons on both sides right so we go for four and then yeah there we are now uh, we can go to the hydrogen like i'm um, advising right so we have uh 10 here clearly and then here we have uh two so we're supposed to multiply by five right so let's multiply this by five so that we can get 10 and then now we can come to oxygen uh here this is eight and then this five here that will give you eight plus five is equals to 13 and then here we have two already so to multiply that and get 13 we need 13 divided by two here and a fraction doesn't really look nice right now the equation is balanced but a fraction doesn't really look nice so we're just gonna multiply everything by two so that we don't have a fraction so we're gonna get 2 c4 h10 plus 13 o2 giving us um 8 c o2 uh plus 10 h2o 